on guys so today we're talking about a very interesting lighter this is the japanese made douglas field s lighter all right it's a trench style lighter but what makes this one extra special is that it is completely waterproof all right it's a very interesting design i had a friend uh who i know online here who sent this to me just to get my opinions on it i have to say i am extremely extremely impressed with this uh, not just the design, but the quality, the fit, finish, the whole deal. Now, this is not a cheap lighter. This sells for around $100, just give and take. Could be anywhere from $80 to $120. There are a couple different variants on this particular one. Uh, this one is the diamond cut, all right? So we have this pattern, this textured pattern along the body of it. Before I get into the lighter, I want to talk about this little uh, maintenance pack, which I think is really cool. This has a couple O-rings. This lighter is chock full of O-rings because, again, it is completely waterproof. That's what sets it apart from a lot of other, you know, similar designs. And we have an extra wick. It's a very long run of wick. And if you notice that there's this plastic leader that's on there, almost like a sewing needle. All right, so you can actually get it through. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous video uh, when I had the IMCO lighter. And I was having a heck of a time getting that wick through. That solves that problem. All right, so you can fish this through the end, pull most of this wick past, trim the size you want, and redo that as many times as you need. It's a really, really cool design. So back to the lighter, it is about three inches long or so. It's got some heft to it, it weighs 2.3 ounces. It just has a very, very solid feel. All right, it's all metal construction. So to operate this lighter, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit further. All right, so you can see this collar here. This has some jimping on it, okay, for texture. You have to rotate this clockwise. If you were looking at it like this, it would be clockwise, okay, to unthread it because it is sealed. Now, as I'm rotating this, I'm also pulling down a little bit, some pressure. So once it's released, you'll feel that, and it'll slide all the way down. It's very, very smooth, okay? So you can see another O-ring here. So this exposes the top so that you're able to actually strike this. All right, so what you wanna do is pull down, and that's how you light the lighter. So what's happening here is there's a ball bearing right there, which corresponds with this little hole, works as a detent, so when it's closed, it almost like it, it clicks shut. That's what builds up the pressure, okay? So when you rotate that, it builds up enough pressure where when it finally pops, it actually gives enough of a rotation down here on the wheel to strike it. So this point from here to here, nothing's happening. But once it hits this point, it's grabbing that wheel, which is the same as a Zippo wheel, okay? Which is striking a flint, which is down inside this tube and throwing sparks towards the wick. So having a normal view here, you're just going to push down on the back here. It's got a spark and light. Very simple. All right, and you close it when you're done. What's interesting too is there's another O-ring that's down on the bottom around the canister where the fuel is, okay? So that this portion here, when shut, actually seals. So again, it's completely waterproof in every aspect. You're keeping the wick with the fuel completely dry, away from water and weather, as well as when this collar is up and shut, this portion here can't get wet as well, okay? So your flinch dry, your wick's dry. It's a really, really interesting design, all right? Now, if I flip it over, let me zoom in, you can see that there's some knurling on the bottom of this. This is our flint tube, okay? So actually, I'll go ahead and unscrew this and show you. Once that's totally unscrewed, you're able to pull it out. You can see it's a long rod. And this actually has a plunger on it. So instead of just being a single long spring, like on a Zippo, the spring's on the inside of this tube. So it's stiff, but it's still adding that pressure against your flint, all right? And there it is, flint just fell out. So we go ahead and put this back in. That's how you would replace your flint. Put the flint down in the tube, then push the plunger all the way down and screw it in. Once this is all the way screwed down, you can go ahead and give it another test just to make sure that it's sparking. All right, so on the bottom here, we have the butt cap for the canister. This is where we're gonna put our fuel. So when you unscrew that, that's where you're adding your fuel. But what makes this really, really interesting is that this base is actually a fuel tank. It's kind of like a reserve fuel tank. So you unscrew this cap, and you can have spare fuel in here, all right? So if your lighter runs out and there's an emergency or something, you do have actual fuel. Or let's say you wanna just get a fire started really quick, you can use this extra fuel to pour directly onto your tinder to just get that going really quickly. But the cap also has a cap, 
<laughs> so let's unscrew that to see what's inside. And here, it houses a spare flint. So not only does this lighter house a spare flint, it also houses spare fuel. That is a really, really cool addition. Of course, these are very small parts, so you have to be careful. Don't uh, cross-thread anything. And all these, by the way, you noticed it, they all have more O-rings. So everything is completely airtight and waterproof. All right. Now the estimate on this is if you fill this lighter, it's supposed to last about a year before any evaporation is gonna happen. All right, really, really interesting. Since we're still zoomed in, let's take a look at these markings. On the top of the lighter says Douglas Lighter. All right, and on the bottom, bunch of information here. On top says Made in Japan. It shows open, close, the directions. It says fuel tank under there, as well as Douglas Studio. Now, quick note, when uh, taking the flint piston out, if you have this bottom cap off, it's a lot easier to grab. Okay, I did it with it closed, which certainly can be done, but obviously once this is removed, you have a lot more room to actually twist that off. Overall, it is a really, really cool lighter. There's a lot of novelty factor here, but it is very, very high quality. The fit and finish is superb. It's literally one of the best quality lighters I've ever had in my life. I would definitely put it on my top five favorite lighters of all time as well. Um, the only downside to this I see is, well, there's two, two parts to this. Because it's waterproof and you have this locking collar, you can't just take it out of your pocket and light it really quick. Not a big deal to me, but if you're a cigarette smoker or you're constantly using your lighter, that might be a downside. Of course, you do have the option of just leaving it unlocked. Okay, just unscrew that. Leave it in the down position and put it in your pocket as is. So when you take it out, you can just strike it. You don't have to worry about locking that unlocking all the time. For me, I'm not using my lighter constantly, so this is really no big deal at all. Um, the only other downside I see is sometimes when using this lighter, because I've been using this for about two weeks now, um, if you strike this too fast, it shuts. It literally bounces back. All right, if you saw that, I'll do, I'll do it again. You see the spark, but it shuts. You have to have, and you can't do too little pressure because then it just kind of builds up and it, it doesn't want to go. It feels like it's, it's stuck, all right? And then again, that has to do with the pressure that's being built up because of the little ball bearing and that detent. It's not a huge deal, but this is a review of the lighter, so it's definitely worth mentioning. It took a little bit of practice to get the right pressure to light that every time. All right, not the most comfortable lighter as far as using it. Uh, and again, if you press too hard, you know, it kind of bounces back and shuts on you and then you don't get that flame. All right, so just a little bit of uh, practice that's needed there. The only other downside as well is I noticed that this is lit for about 30 to 60 seconds. It does get significantly hot all in the chimney area. All right, so just more of a word of warning as opposed to like a design flaw, because as we know, especially from testing, all metal lighters do get hot. I like this one so much, it's gonna replace my EDC lighter. Uh, not only knowing that that fuel is gonna be conserved in there, I do prefer the soft flame as opposed to this Vector Summit, which you guys have seen plenty of before. That uh, single jet flame is awesome for a lot of different tasks, um, but you know, it's not a big deal to swap that for the soft flame, just because I like this design so much. All right, so yeah, this is gonna be with me everywhere I go, every single day. So if you guys have the Douglas Field S lighter, let me know down in the comment section what you think of yours. There are tons of different looks as well. This specific model, I think it comes in black. Uh, there's like a, a brass or gold color one too. So, you know, if you're one of those people that want to color match your EDC stuff, you can certainly do so. There's a lot of different looks to it. I'm just thoroughly impressed with this lighter. I'd like to actually try some of the other models that Douglas offers. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.